all listed here. I'm going to hit select and OK. So now I have all my sloped columns selected here. Uh, now I want to create a group so that um, in the future if I want to uh, call up the um, I want to quickly locate those columns. It's kind of like a way to save a search. So if you've already you done a search and you've gathered all these elements that you're interested in, um, you can create a group and it's just re going to reference those, uh, those individual elements. So I'll go to uh, under the attributes, project attributes window here. Um, showing that's that's the uh, the window we're dealing with. I'm going to go down to the second to last option under unspecified groups and you'll see there's only one option here, grouping. And once I do that you'll see that the the button right next to it is is is, um, is highlighted here, group. So now that I have these elements selected and I press group it's going to take all those and put them inside of a group. Now it's not going to take the objects and actually move them. The, the original um, model and the geometry and all that is, is untouched. All this is going to do is basically create a bunch of references to those individual sloped column objects. So in this case, um, I'll call this group columns slanted, so these are, are uh, slanted or I could say sloped columns, and click OK. So now you'll see that we have a group uh, created here, and if we expand that, it actually is it's going to show all the slanted columns, but you shouldn't think that you, you've now cop, literally copied these, these columns into this part of the tree. You haven't. You're, just, you're basically just referencing the columns. The, the columns are still contained within, uh, within your project product. So if we go down to expand, you'll find this, this uh, column slope 1, level 2 is still located inside of our project. We're just, we've just created kind of a reference to its location in the model. So this is just convenient to be able to uh, collect all of those uh, objects that you may want to, to work with later. Um, another, uh, another convenient uh, use of grouping is if you want to, um, if you are finding that you're always loading uh, certain parts uh, into design mode, then it's a, there's a very quick way to um, to group those and then always select those to load into memory. So I'm gonna again I'm gonna go back to my edit search tool. And like the first search we did, I'm going to do the uh, asterisk column asterisk, and I'm going to set the type, reset the type back to just asterisk there, and then part, um, I'm going to search for just parts, and then hit my search tool. So like, like the first search we did, I'm going to just select the, the column part, part files. All right, and hit select and OK. And now I'm going to create a new group. Um, and I can call that column parts to load and hit OK. And so now the next time I open this, um, this my annotations, if I want to, instead of having to search for the, the column parts uh, and, then, and then load them into design mode, um, I, can, I can just expand here and 
select, hold shift, and select all the parts through the, the group in the column parts to load, and then hit design mode, and it's going to load them all. So this is just a quick way to, to uh, retain that, that search. So um, now uh, I want to look at uh, sorted views. So sorted views is actually kind of like a, a dynamic view of the model based on a particular attribute. Um, if you want, in this case, the attribute where we've been working with is column properties uh, slope. So let's say we want to view the model by looking at all the objects in this model that have that property. Um, there's, there's a nice way to save that. And what's nice is it's a dynamic view, so every time you open the model and you load it, if, if there's any objects that have that attribute, it'll dynamically uh, create a list. So um, I'm going to go up to uh, create sorted view. But before I do that, um, I want to, uh, well, I can, I can click that button. But I want to make sure to switch this, uh, instead of unspecified groups, I want to switch it to my IFC property sets. And I want to switch this to my column properties. And the variable we're going to search for is slope. So now I have IFC property sets, column properties, slope. I'm going to click Add. And once I've got that set up, I just click OK. And you can see right away in the tree, there's a new element called sorted views. I expand that. I see uh, it's listed by slope. And then under that, I see that it's starting from the most extreme condition, so uh, 46 degrees from horizontal. It's almost a 45 degree angle um, to the least sloped column all the way up to 82.1. So, and then you can see even further, you can expand that. You can see which column uh, this is referring to. So this is column uh, slope 7, level 2. And the least, col the least sloped one looks like it's uh, column uh, slope 1, level 17. So it's, it's up here. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty um, quick and easy way to call up all the elements um, that are <clears throat> being, uh, that are being, um, that have the same attribute. Uh, in this case, the column properties uh, slope. And it lists, and then it lists those in ascending order. And every time you open the model, it'll, it'll reestablish this list. Um, and if it's changed at all, it'll, it'll resort. So I'm going to save that, save my, uh, my, my model currently. I just hit Control S to save. Now, last, uh, last thing we're going to look at um, deals with how do, we, how do we visualize the model based on the data. So how do we look at the model um, and understand the range of values in that model? So this, this was one, one way, but it just shows us kind of a, a, a raw listing of the, of the degrees of slope. But let's say we want to look at the whole model and understand it visually based on those column slopes. So this is where we want to use a color filter. The color filter, um, the, the first thing we want to do 
is make sure that under attributes we 